Dear listeners, tonight I invite you to embark on a journey through ancient times where the whispers of gods and the bravery of mortals intertwine. We will venture into the heart of the mystical lands of Greece, into a hidden mountain village where Poseidon's golden amphora, a sacred artifact with the power to summon rain, has been stolen from his temple. So, close your eyes and let yourselves be enveloped by the echoes of this ancient legend as we navigate together on the ways of time where myths and heroes come to life. The Mystery of Poseidon's Golden Amphora In ancient times, when the gods still walked among men and the mysteries of Olympus intertwined with the lives of mortals in the heart of Hellas, a land blessed with natural beauty and spiritual grandeur, there was a small village sheltered by high mountains and dense forests. This was a world where nature and the divine intertwined in an eternal dance, and the villagers knew that their existence depended on the goodwill of the gods. At the center of this harmony stood a sacred temple dedicated to Poseidon, the god of the seas and storms. The temple, of simple and austere beauty, was built from white stone brought from afar, gleaming under the gentle Greek sun. The tall pillars, masterfully carved, bore images of the gods and heroes who had clashed over the ages. Inside, Light filtered through narrow openings, creating a play of shadows and light, as if immortalizing the relationship between the divine and the human. In the middle of the temple, on a smooth stone altar, shone a golden amphora, a relic so old that even the oldest of the elders could not remember when it had been placed there. The amphora, delicately sculpted, was a gift from Poseidon himself, a sacred object that connected earth to sky and people to gods. It was not merely an object, but a manifestation of the divine on earth. The amphora was meant to bring saving rain in times of drought, when the lands dried up and life itself seemed to withdraw from the world. Every villager knew that the amphora was the key to their survival, a priceless gift that brought them the water needed to cultivate the land, fill the wells, and sustain life in their small corner of the world. Priestess Calliope, young and pure, was the guardian of this divine treasure. She was known for her ethereal beauty, but above all for her pure heart and unwavering devotion to Poseidon. Calliope had been chosen to fulfill this sacred role not only because she descended from a long line of priests but also because her soul was of a rare purity. People believed that she had been blessed by Poseidon from birth, that she had a special connection with the god, and her presence brought peace and calm to the village. Every evening, as the sun set, Calliope would climb the steps of the temple, carrying in her hands a vessel of fresh spring water, which she offered to the amphora in gratitude. Then, she would raise her arms to the sky and recite melodious prayers, songs dedicated to Poseidon, which echoed throughout the valley. The voices of the wind seemed to join with hers, and the waves of the sea, though far away, seemed to respond to her sacred call. In these moments, the world seemed to stand still, and time lost its significance. Calliope was one with the gods, and the golden amphora responded with a gentle glow, promising divine protection. This sacred routine was the heart of life in the village. The villagers knew that as long as Calliope prayed and the amphora shone, they would be safe. Every morning, when the first rays of the sun touched the mountain peaks, Calliope would emerge from the temple, and the villagers would greet her with smiles and thanks. They saw in her not just a priestess, but a bridge between their world and the divine, a guarantee of prosperity and peace. But one night, when the stars seemed paler than usual and the air was heavy and oppressive, 
A sinister foreboding crept into the hearts of the villagers. The sky, usually clear and calm, was covered with dark clouds, and the wind carried the scent of a storm. The villagers gathered in their homes, praying in silence, sensing that something was amiss. In that oppressive silence, a strange sound echoed in the temple, like a deep rumble from the bowels of the earth. Calliope, who was sleeping in her small room near the temple, awoke suddenly, feeling a cold shiver down her spine. It was an unnatural sound, as if the stones of the temple were groaning under the weight of a secret hidden for centuries. Without hesitation, Calliope wrapped a thin shawl around her shoulders and hurried towards the altar. With her heart pounding, the priestess climbed the steps leading to the sanctuary, each step accompanied by a dull echo. The darkness in the temple seemed denser than ever, and the flames of the torches barely flickered, as if evil forces were trying to extinguish the last glimmer of light. Reaching the altar, Calliope held her breath for a moment, feeling an unseen weight pressing on her chest. Before her, the golden amphora, the divine relic, had vanished. The place where it had rested for generations was now empty, and the gentle glow that filled the temple had dissipated. In the amphora's place, on the cold stone of the altar, lay a single black feather, a disturbing symbol of those who had stolen it. The feather, slightly curved, seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy, sending waves of fear through Calliope's body. With a soul filled with horror, Calliope realized that the deeds of the wicked had not only endangered the lives of the villagers, but had also unleashed dark forces that only the sacred amphora could contain. The drought threatened to become a reality, and the village, without the amphora's protection, was at the mercy of the gods and the whims of nature, which were no longer tempered by the divine relic. At dawn the following day, as the first rays of the sun began to caress the mountain peaks, a heavy silence dominated the village. The disappearance of the golden amphora was an inconceivable disaster, and the news that the sacred relic had been stolen spread like lightning through every corner of the settlement. The rain, which once came at the amphora's call, was now just a distant memory, and the thought of a severe drought clenched their hearts. Without water, the fertile lands would dry up, the crops would perish, and the animals would suffer. Their simple but blessed lives were now threatened by an unseen and incomprehensible force. In the village center, in front of the empty temple, the villagers gathered quickly. Every gaze turned to Calliope, the young priestess who had, until now, been the guarantor of divine protection. The people saw in her their last hope, the only person who could change the course of impending disaster. Calliope, with her soul still troubled by the horror of the previous night's discovery, felt the weight of their expectations as an overwhelming burden. It was not just her duty as a priestess that drove her to act, but also her deep love for the people she considered her own family. Knowing that she could not face this danger alone, Calliope turned her thoughts to Theron, a warrior renowned not only in their village but throughout the land. Theron, a man known for his bravery and unwavering loyalty, was the most reliable ally she could wish for. Theron lived in a modest hut on the edge of the village, near the forest. When Calliope arrived at his door that morning, he felt his heart skip a beat. Without a word, their eyes met, and Theron understood the gravity of the situation. Calliope told him about the theft of the amphora and the panic that had gripped the village. Theron, without hesitation, vowed to help her recover the sacred relic, knowing that only by doing so could their village survive.
Calliope's eyes filled with gratitude and hope, and at that moment, in front of those who had gathered to hear their plan, the two made an unspoken pact. They would not return home without the Amphora. Together, they embarked on a long and perilous journey to Ithaca, a city known for its criminals and unscrupulous rulers. The road to Ithaca was far from simple. It was not just the distance that was an obstacle, but also the dangers that lurked at every step. Calliope and Theron set off with hearts full of determination, but also with a silent fear of the unknown that awaited them. Their first trial came in the form of an unexpected attack from bloodthirsty pirates. The sea they were navigating to reach their destination more quickly was full of dangers. In the midst of a seemingly calm day, when the sun shone in the clear sky, a shadow loomed on the horizon. It was a large ship with black sails, rapidly approaching them. Theron, with his keen eyes, spotted the danger before it got too close and prepared his sword, warning Calliope. The ensuing battle was not an ordinary one. The pirates, known for their bloodlust and cruelty, showed no mercy. In the heat of the fight, Theron demonstrated his mastery of swordsmanship. Every strike was precise, every movement calculated. Calliope, though not a warrior, did not stand idly by. With her voice full of sacred prayers, she invoked the gods' help, asking for protection and strength. Her words rose to the sky like sacred music, and Theron felt that every strike of his sword was supported by an unseen force, as if Poseidon himself were guiding his hand. Though ultimately victorious, the battle with the pirates had depleted their resources and increased their burden. Every moment of the fight had exhausted them, and Calliope felt her prayers growing weaker, as if the divine power that once supported them was becoming distant. Nevertheless, the two travelers did not lose hope. As they neared Ithaca, the obstacles became more difficult. Ithaca, a place known for its wickedness and cunning inhabitants, was protected not only by high walls and soldiers, but also by a series of traps meant to discourage any intruder. Theron and Calliope knew that to reach the Amphora, they would have to face and overcome these obstacles, but their resolve remained unshaken. Finally, after crossing raging rivers and dense forests, they were forced to venture through a labyrinth of dark caves full of traps and dangers. The caves, cold and damp, were a test of courage and skill. Every step was fraught with danger, every breath a mix of fear and anticipation. Theron used his intuition to deactivate hidden mechanisms, but the traps seemed endless. As they neared the heart of the labyrinth, Calliope felt a subtle change in the air. In the distance, a faint light began to shine, guiding them like a beacon in a dark night. Calliope and Theron, with hearts full of determination, carefully stepped onto the final corridor of the cave, following the faint light in the distance. The cold, dark walls began to open up gradually, and the sound of their footsteps became clearer as they neared the exit. Finally, they reached the end of the labyrinth and stepped out into the fresh night air. The moonlight greeted them, and before them lay the road to the city of Ithaca, where their next challenge awaited. Calliope and Theron eventually reached the city of Ithaca. The city, shrouded in an air of mystery and hostility, displayed its grandeur and threat through its high walls and seemingly impregnable stone towers. Ithaca was an ancient city, built on foundations of legend and pride, but now, under the rule of a corrupt king, it had become a bastion of cruelty and greed. 
Theron and Calliope gaze with respect and fear at the fortress before them. The high walls seem to whisper stories of battles lost and won, of hopes buried under tons of stone, and of ambitions shattered under the weight of their own arrogance. But the two had no choice. They had to penetrate the heart of the city, where, according to rumors, the golden amphora was displayed as a precious trophy, a relic of power that the king of Ithaca intended to use to subjugate all of Greece. Ithaca, although a famous and respected city in times past, had decayed under the current king's rule. Once a wise and just leader, he had been corrupted by ambition and an insatiable desire for power. Over the years, the king had surrounded himself with dishonest advisors and unscrupulous soldiers, turning the city into a place of fear and oppression. Under his rule, the laws were perverted, and his people lived in constant fear. In this dark and evil-dominated world, the king of Ithaca believed that the golden amphora would grant him the ultimate power to rule not only his people but all of Greece. For the king of Ithaca, the amphora was nothing more than a tool of power, a mystical artifact he saw as a key to domination. In his ignorance and arrogance, the king believed he possessed the secret to unleashing the relic's true power. He could not imagine that this magical relic did not respond to just anyone's call but only to the call of a pure soul, one who truly understood the will of the god Poseidon. When Calliope and Theron managed to infiltrate the city, they realized that every step was a bow. The walls seemed alive, pulsing with the energy of those who had built them and those who had died defending them. Calliope, with a trembling heart, felt that every movement she made was being watched, that every breath of wind whispered warnings of danger. Theron, armed with his unyielding courage, focused all his senses on protecting Calliope and finding the way to the king's throne. The city was a maze of narrow, dark alleys, and every corner had unseen dangers. The king's soldiers patrolled relentlessly, and the city's inhabitants, once proud and dignified, were now frightened and subdued, retreating into their homes at any sign of an intruder. But Calliope and Theron, guided by their determination to recover the amphora, continued their path avoiding direct confrontations as much as possible. Finally, they reached the heart of the city, where the king's throne towered above all, a symbol of his corrupt power. The golden amphora, placed on a marble pedestal, was presented as a conquered trophy, an object that, in the king's hands, symbolized his victory over destiny. The king of Ithaca stood in the middle of the throne room, looking with disdain at the relic that he believed would soon bring in the submission of all Greece. When Theron and Calliope entered the hall, the whispers ceased. The tension was palpable, the air becoming almost unbearably dense. Theron, armed with his sword, prepared for confrontation, while Calliope, with a soul full of fear but also hope, slowly approached the Amphora. She knew they had no time to waste. The king, furious and desperate to retain his power, would not give them a second chance. The king of Ithaca, seeing their attempt to take the Amphora, felt his blood boil with rage. He knew that these intruders had not come just to steal his trophy but to undermine his authority and power. In his mind, the loss of the Amphora was synonymous with the loss of his throne, so, in a final desperate attempt to secure his victory, he unleashed a hidden weapon, a stone colossus, animated by ancient and dark magic. The colossus, immense and terrifying, rose from the shadows, each movement shaking the ground and the walls of the throne room. His eyes were red, like two apocalyptic suns, 
and he emanated a malevolent, almost suffocating energy. He seemed invincible, and his mere presence induced fear in the hearts of those who beheld him. Theron, without losing his courage, prepared for battle, but he knew he was facing a force far beyond human capabilities. Although the situation seemed hopeless, Calliope did not give up. With her heart pounding but her mind clear and determined, she rose above fear, feeling that all the trials she had endured had prepared her for this moment. In the face of the stone colossus, a monstrous and imposing creation, Calliope gathered all her inner strength and, with unexpected courage, uttered a sacred prayer to Poseidon, the god who had watched over her steps since childhood. Her voice, initially trembling, gained strength as the sacred words left her mouth, reverberating throughout the throne room. At that moment, something magical happened. The golden amphora, the sacred relic that had been the center of their entire journey and struggle, began to glow. A strong and warm light emanated from it, spreading in gentle waves all around. The light was not just visible, it was also palpable, bringing with it a feeling of peace and protection. The Colossus, who had until then seemed invincible, suddenly stopped, as if he instantly recognized the authority of the relic's true guardian. In the face of this divine force, the Colossus, a creation animated by ancient and dark magic, no longer had the power to continue. He remained motionless, enveloped in the blessed light of the Amphora. At the same time, the King of Ithaca, blinded by his own greed and desire for power, observing how his Colossus was neutralized, desperately tried to approach the Amphora, believing he could still control the situation. However, as his outstretched hand tried to touch the amphora, an unseen force violently repelled him. The king, shocked and powerless, was thrown back, realizing with horror that he had no control over the relic. The amphora's light, which had become increasingly intense, repelled any attempt at corruption, protecting its purity and divine purpose. The golden lights spread throughout the throne room, filling the space with a healing and purifying energy. Any trace of evil, darkness, or corruption melted away under this light, leaving behind only peace and calm. It was as if the very essence of the god Poseidon had descended upon the city, bringing with it an immeasurable blessing. Outside, the sky, which had been closed and oppressive, opened up, and rain began to fall from the heavens. It was a blessed rain, bringing abundance and life, in stark contrast to the drought and despair that had threatened Calliope's entire world. The rain, falling in large, heavy drops, washed away all the sins and wounds of the city of Ithaca. The dry and cracked soil began to absorb the water with thirst, and soon, the green of vegetation began to make its way through the cracks in the earth. It was a clear sign that the gods had forgiven the city and were granting it a new chance. The people of Ithaca, who had lived under the terror of a corrupt king, felt for the first time in a long time a renewed hope. The falling rain was not just a natural phenomenon for them, but a manifestation of divine mercy. The king, humiliated and dishonored, now understood that his mad ambitions had led to his own ruin. With a broken heart and aware that he no longer had any support in his city, he was exiled by Theron. The king, who had once dreamed of subjugating all of Greece, now wandered in anonymity, a man cast out, a living example of divine punishment. When Calliope and Theron returned to their village, their journey, though hard and full of perils, had ended in a triumph of justice and goodness. 
They were greeted with joy and gratitude by the villagers, who saw them not only as the saviors of the village, but also as messengers of the gods. The people gathered around the temple, where the amphora was once again placed on its altar, in the same spot from which it had been stolen. At that moment, a new light, bright and pure, enveloped the temple, a sign that Poseidon was pleased and once again blessed the lands. The blessings of the god Poseidon poured over the entire land. The rain continued to fall at regular intervals, bringing abundant water for the crops, and the lands, once dry and barren, began to yield again. The harvests were plentiful, and the animals, once weakened by drought, regained their vigor. The people, encouraged by these divine signs, resumed their lives with new zeal, cherishing every moment and every blessing as a divine gift. And so, the sacred bond between people and gods was strengthened, and the peace, once lost, was restored for all generations to come. And that, dear listeners, was the story of Poseidon's Amphora. So, remember, within every heart lies the power to face the impossible, and in every shadow, a story waiting to be revealed. If you enjoyed tonight's journey into the ancient lands of Greece, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and ring the notification bell, so you won't miss another captivating story. Until next time, may your dreams be filled with divine magic, and your nights with endless adventures. Sleep well, dear friends.